morning, what I would like to share with you is something that, uh, that, that the Lord has always uh, brought me back to, fundamentals and basics. You know, I often thought about when I was an athlete many, 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 many years ago, a lot of times what I heard was fundamentals, fundamentals. You know, and when you get good at something, you know, it's, there's a tendency to maybe move away from those fundamentals. But you know, I got to thinking one day that even the pro athletes have a coach. So that kind of showed me that you never ever get to that place where you've arrived. And um, when I was uh, in the engineering department at Marathon as a draftsman, there was a period of time there where When we did our drawings, we had to not only put feet and inches, but we had to also use the metric system. Uh, they kind of went away from that. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, what we're talking about here is standards. And uh, so that's what we're going to look at this morning, is some of God's standards for us as his children. And uh, I see Purpose, our purpose up there is on the screen, so we might as well utilize this slide. Okay, somebody put a lot of work into it, so we're going to use it. What is our purpose here? To love God, and transform lives, and to serve the Lord. Standards, that's what we're going to look at today. God's standards. Do you realize, and I'm sure you do, that the only standard that have ever stood the test of time that have remained unchanged since the foundations of the world is the standard of God's word. Isn't that awesome? That, that through all of this, you know, as many people have lived on this earth, and as many centuries as have gone by, and as many thousands of years, that when God's established his word in the beginning, it has not faltered one time in all of that period. So, it stands to reason that in our, in the short span of our lifetime, it ought to work for us as well. Amen? See, because in his word, he reveals to us uh, what his will is, who he is, and how we as his creation are to relate to him. Now, there's, there's a saying that says, God said it, I believe it, and that settled it. Well, you know, that's a good worldly problem. But if you wanted to spiritualize that, you would have to modify it to say this. God said it, that settled it. Because what God says, there's no debate about it. You know, um, in... Uh, Psalm 119.89, the scriptures say, Forever, O Lord, thy word is set in heaven. And I like to use the word and let the word speak for itself. You know, I can read a passage and I can stand up here or sit here and say to you what I think that means. But, you know, what I like to do is I like to let the word just speak for itself. Okay? Because when... When it's put in front of us, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to interpret it for us. Because I have an opinion, you have an opinion, she has an opinion. You know, we can come up with all these varying opinions, but when we allow the Holy Spirit to interpret it for us, amazingly, we all come up with the same interpretation. Again, speaking to the power of God. See, what we like to do is we like to shape ourselves a God that fits our personal standards. We all do it. I do it. You do it. Uh, and, you know, when we do that, when, when we formulate a God that, that fits our personal standards, and, and this is his standard, okay? Because that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about standards. Uh, when we do that, the Bible calls that idolatry. In essence, we become our own golden calf. 
Now, for those of you that are old enough to remember Muhammad Ali, great uh, prize fighter, world champion, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali was, he was very braggadocious. You know, and his moniker was, I am the greatest. Okay? Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Now, you know, some of that was in jest. A lot of it, I'm sure, he believed at the time. But, uh, but you know, that was part of his moniker. That was part of his getting into the head of his opponent, was to, you know, brag up his own prowess in, in, the, uh, in the ring. And uh, one, one story about Muhammad Ali that, that is told is that, that uh, you know, somebody was, you know, th this I'm the greatest was wearing thin on him, you know. And uh, so they, they just, I think it was a reporter, he just he got tired of hearing, I am the greatest, I am the greatest. So he asked Muhammad Ali, he says, he says well, how are you in golf? And Muhammad Ali says, I'm the greatest. He said, I just ain't played it yet. <laughs> now, a, a humorous example of setting ourselves up as an idol. And uh, as I said, uh, we become our own golden king. And as we're looking at God's standards, I want to look at the second commandment because, you know, we know the we may not know them in order, but basically we know them. But I think it's good to go back to the basics, the fundamentals. Okay, and the second commandment is in Deuteronomy chapter 5. Now, we know the first part of this. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, we know that. Now, look at what, it, look, look at, look at what else God wrote here regarding that commandment. Thou shalt not make the of make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them. Now that's the complete second commandment. Okay? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That sets it up. But how much relevance do we give to the rest of that? The Word tells us in Hebrews chapter 13 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's why Romans 12.1 tells us, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And then he tacks on to the end of that, this is your spiritual act of worship. And that's what, we're, that's what we've been talking about for how many weeks? Worship. And we're going to look at God's standard for worship. But he tells us, in Romans 12, 1, and I'm going to turn there. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And he says, This is our reasonable act of worship. Now, again, let's take this whole text. That sets it up. But we're talking about God's standard. What does the rest of this text say? It says, before I share this with you, you know, when it comes to, you know, going to church, or why shouldn't we go to church, or you're talking about to people that, you know, you really need to come to church because the Bible says that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, and that scripture is found in Hebrews chapter 10, it's 10 25, and we all know that one very well, but I'm going to bring out some scriptures to you that support why we need And it starts right here. He says, do not conform any longer, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, we pray, God, let me be in your will. God, let me be in your will. His 
Word reveals His will. Okay? And that prayer, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm denigrating that prayer, but it's almost like that's a catch-all for when we don't know where else to go. 